welcome. Bishop, how are you? Thank you so much. Wonderful to be with you, Ron. Yeah. Wonderful to be with all of you, our viewers and listeners, in this month of October, the month of pro-life, <laughs> the month of Our Lady of the Rosary, and the month where I go on pilgrimage. But we're going to get to that in just a minute. All right. Now, you always say you're left-handed, so you start from the uh, the one side and we go the wrong way, right? So, always. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to do something a little different than we normally do. Normally, we have you talk about your schedule and thank you, Ron, and that type of thing, and then we go to our gospel and do a question. But today, we have a question that's going to lead into what I think you're going to talk about. Because the question is going to be my schedule. <laughs> it's going to be your schedule. So we're mixing it up, folks. So, folks, we're going to start with Carol, who's actually on social media, who says, Dear Bishop Thomas... I know you are leading a pilgrimage to Italy soon. I wish I was joining you. What are you most looking forward to? Thanks, Carol. So, Carol, thank you for the question. And this gives me the opportunity on this show to be able to share with all of you what I'm doing regarding this pilgrimage. And, Carol, you said, I wish I was joining you. I wish you were joining me, too. I wish we could have had thousands of people. But, obviously, this is a pilgrimage, folks, that I have longed to do. As bishop, it's a diocesan pilgrimage with at least 45 folks, and I'm so delighted that we'll be cared for by Catholic Faith Journeys, and they are handling the pilgrimage for us, and we're taking about 45 pilgrims, the vast majority, from across the Diocese of Toledo. And I am so excited, and Carol, you ask, uh, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to everything. But Carol, you say you're leading a pilgrimage to Italy, actually— it's a pil pilgrimage to Spain and to Italy. So it's both and, not either or, Ron. Yeah. And the gift is that we'll be so excited to be able to be visiting our sister city, Toledo, Spain, and visit our sister cathedral in Toledo. Already I know we have confirmed, which is wonderful, a mass with the Archbishop of Toledo, where our people will be able to be with me at mass with him. And then I'll be able to bring him gifts, a few gifts from the Diocese of Toledo. And during our time in Spain, we'll be in Madrid, Avila, Segovia, and we'll also be able to visit because remember, folks, a pilgrimage is not a vacation. A pilgrimage is not just a trip. It's a holy pilgrimage to holy places for special intentions. So we're going to visit with the places of St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, while we're there. Then we move to Italy, Ron, where I'm very excited, of course, always since I lived there too long. I'm thrilled to be able to be there. We'll be two nights in Assisi, and already I know that I'll be the celebrant of the English-speaking Mass that Sunday morning, so very exciting for our pilgrims. And from there, then, we're going to visit, please God, Norcia, where we'll go to the Monastery of St. Benedict, at Benedict's birthplace, to Deruta, back to Assisi, or Vieto, where the we had the Eucharistic miracle of Bolsena located, and then make our way to Rome. And very exciting, of course, of course, the four basilicas will be part of that pilgrimage, but I'm so excited also to share, again, at least it's planned, that on Thursday in the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls, we'll have Mass with a Cardinal James Harvey, who is the archpriest of the Basilica there, a friend of mine, Saturday morning in the Basilica of St. Peter's, we'll have Mass with Cardinal Edward O'Brien. And that's at the altar of the tomb, and it's also the feast of St. John Paul II. So we'll visit his tomb, and it's also the eighth anniversary of my being your bishop, my installation. And on Thursday, we'll have the joy of visiting the North American College Seminary, celebrating Mass for the feast of the North American Martyrs, visiting with our seminarian, Andrew Messer, and having a tour of that seminary. So all of those things for me are terribly exciting. Carol, of course, very exciting will be, please God, the opportunity to go to a papal audience and to greet the Holy Father on behalf of all of you. And you can follow uh, my whereabouts and the whereabouts as we make our way on pilgrimage for two weeks on social media, my Facebook page, the diocesan social media. So please follow me and also we're going to have a very, very special opportunity for you to give your prayers so that I may remember all of your intentions every single day with our pilgrims along the way in this pilgrimage. So I very much want to hear and learn what you would like me to pray for 
and I'm going to be bringing daily the intentions of our entire diocese, all the lay faithful, consecrated religious deacons and priests, bringing all of those to each of the holy places that we visit. So isn't that exciting, Ron? It's, it's unbelievably exciting. And I know you would like I to really, have gone, Ron. I really wish I could have been You there. didn't apply when it was I, when it was out there. No, I know. You missed sure. the boat, Ron. I know, I did. <laughs> I, I don't know how that happened either. But I know. Now, you spent how long at the Vatican? Too long. How long? <laughs> I worked at the Holy See for the Holy Father for 15 years. 15 years? That's right. So you know a little bit about Well, area, I, I right? know how to order pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm what I'm getting to is these these people that are going on this pilgrimage they they could have some inside info maybe. Well, I don't know about inside, but you please know. God, they'll the, it'll be a really <laughs> wonderful pilgrimage. Well, it sounds like it. it's just yeah. unbelievable. I'm very excited. And, about and repeat it. again, real quickly. How can people follow you? So at, on all our social media, so they can follow me through the pilgrimage. Hopefully, we'll be making daily updates of where we are and what we're doing. And I'd love to have you follow me virtually so that you can pray with us as we pilgrim our way through Spain and Italy. And they can do that on my Facebook page, and they can do it also on the social media of our diocese. So the um, the diocesan website, and then Instagram and Twitter. Well, I can't wait to get back to talk to you about it. So. I can't wait to be back to share it. All right. So let's Thank you. head, if it's okay with you, let's uh, go to a recent gospel Please. from Luke from the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering the village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. Your thoughts, Bishop. Thank you, folks. We continue our journey through the Gospel of Luke in these Sundays in ordinary time. And here on this 28th Sunday, we have a gospel which often you've heard on the celebration of Thanksgiving because of the reality of healing. And then the whole question is, who has re only this one has come back to offer thanks? What happened to the other nine? So you might have heard it on Thanksgiving, but this time, obviously it's in ordinary time. We're not yet at Thanksgiving time. And I think I would like to focus on that simple prayer of those who stood at a distance, the lepers, who said, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Two notes here. Jesus does have pity on them because they seek his healing. And second, Jesus' healing is not reserved only for the Jews. So here we know that the one who came back to thank him was not even a Jew. It was a Samaritan. We also know that the lepers, you know, we even use that, we use that term, don't we, colloquially now in a negative way. Oh, he's a leper of society, which simply means he's an outcast. We know that they were outcast from society, not to be close even physically to people. And I don't know about you, but if you've seen uh, any of the uh, the uh, depictions of the chosen, which is a beautiful depiction of Jesus, which is online and there's an app for it, this episode in particular is very moving and striking because, of course, Jesus embraces the leper. So first, what is it that, and again, remember, lepers were people who were distanced because of their illness. What is it about our lives? How have we distanced ourselves from Jesus and from others because of sin? And so that moves us to say, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Because each of us, if we're honest, needs healing. And if we're humble enough, needs healing. And secondly, to recognize it's not only Catholics or Christians, but it's anyone in the world who seeks healing. Jesus is looking to heal them, possibly through our instrumentality. So in those two ways, I would invite you to reflect on this gospel from Luke from last Sunday, and then to hear those wonderful words of Jesus at the end, because 
Only the foreigner came back to give thanks, and he said to him, Stand up and go your way. Your faith has saved you. All right. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you. Folks, we have to take a quick break, but we will be right back, and we have a lot of questions to get to, so don't go anywhere. Thank you, everyone. Bishop, you stay where, where you're at. Stay with us. All right. We'll be right back. Annunciation Radio is your voice for the Diocese of Toledo. Serving Northwest and North Central Ohio for over 10 years, Annunciation Radio is your home for the Bishop's Corner and other great local shows from our own diocese like Say Yes to Life with Peter Range, Understanding Scripture with Father Dave Nuss, and our live local Catholic morning show, Morning Offering. Listen live on your radio or anytime on demand on the Annunciation Radio app or website. And we're back here at the Bishop's Corner with Bishop Daniel Thomas. Uh, folks, so glad you've stayed with us, folks. Yeah, folks, we are always eager to get your questions. Uh, you can just go to bishop and annunciationradio.com and put your question right in there. We'll get that to the bishop. We would ask maybe you give us your first name, your parish, the community you're from, something like that. So the bishop has an idea who he's speaking to. We do get a lot of questions, folks. And if you don't hear it on the first show you're listening to, keep listening because your question will get asked to the bishop at some point down the road. And we're going to go, Bishop, to Sean, who says he's listening on the Annunciation Radio app. Terrific. Thank you, Sean. Uh, dear Bishop, thank you for your recent show of questions that are addressed in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. I purchased a catechism, and I hope I have the one that's most up to date. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the one with the green cover, but is there more than one of those? Any way for me to tell if I have the right one? Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Sean, so much. And as I mentioned, and thanks for, I, I have to say, I got some very positive comments about that show, Ron, that we did just about the Catholic Catechism, but it was the other Ron who was filling in for you when we did that show. But it was very helpful because it, it re remember that it highlighted how everybody should have a Catholic Catechism on their shelf and that we need to go to the Catechism, not only to be enriched and learn more deeply our own faith, but when others ask us questions, to be able to go to the catechism to answer them. So just a note, Sean, thank you very much for mentioning. And remember, you can access the catechism. You know, forget about whether you have it published in your hand as a book. But the reality is, first and foremost, you can access it on the Vatican website. So that's very important to mention, which we may not have mentioned the last time. Some, however, still prefer the old-fashioned way of having a book in front of them, so a book on your shelf. And it might be a little confusing because there really are three versions of the catechism that are in circulation. Remember, the first version was a tan version. You might remember that. The cover was tan in color, at least in English and approved by the Vatican. Then, as I mentioned last week, there were a couple versions which were green, and it was the second edition with some corrections from earlier versions. And, you know, sometimes there's simply typos, and that's what they did. They corrected those. But then I believe there's also, and this is good for you, Sean, and I'm sure Riegers would know this, at least one of our local religious goods stores, that there is now a blue version. And the blue cover has revisions of a paragraph that dealt with the death penalty. That came out in 2018. So that would be probably the most updated one. A lot of people, however, Sean, have the green second edition, as I do, and then I have inserted it because I printed it from the Vatican website. I didn't go buy a whole new book, but I have inserted the new paragraphs that were included regarding the death penalty. So that's the update, and please know I'm delighted that you have purchased a catechism. Just make sure you have those updates that were offered. So it seems to me, for the updated version, the, probably it's this blue, dark blue cover that's now the most current up-to-date resource as a text. But again, you can always go to the Vatican website and look up Catholic Catechism and find it online. Okay. Thanks, Sean, Thank you for the question. Um, we're going to go to Kirsten uh, from St. Rose of Lima in Perrysburg. Um, I think that's St. Rose of Lima. Lima Ron. I know. <laughs> It's Lima, Ohio. I initially Ohio. thought it was going to say Lima, Ohio. It's then Lima, Ohio. Lima That's Perrysburg. right. I thought, there's something <laughs> wrong here, isn't there? There you go. All right. Uh, dear Bishop Thomas. Thanks for writing in, Kirsten. I wondered if you might have thoughts or suggestions on how to teach young children how to pray the rosary. 
My husband and I are both converts to the faith, so we were taught to pray the rosary as adults. And the way we're trying to teach our boys, taking it slow, showing everyone which beat is next, etc., doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> it always seems to end in frustration on the part of the little boys who simply cannot keep up or who feel like they just can't listen and have to participate like their older brother and mom and dad. Uh, does this just take time and practice, or is there another way that might be better geared toward young children? Uh, please know of our prayers. We try to pray for you before the rosary frustration sets in. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. Well, Kirsten, thank you so much for that question, and thanks so much for those intentional prayers even before the rosary frustration sets in. I'm deeply grateful to you and your family. And to all those families we know who pray the rosary regularly, but in particular during this month of October, which is dedicated, of course, to Our Lady of the Rosary. And we know we celebrate that feast at our cathedral, October 7th. So, Kirsten, I guess the first thing I would say is all over the Internet, you can find some wonderful resources. And I'm just going to mention a few. So, teachingcatholickids.com, teaching kids the rosary, for example. Homeschoolinginprogress.com, teaching children the rosary. EverydayPrayerCO.com, How to Teach the Rosary to Ultimate Teacher's Guide for Children. Uh, Catechist's Journey at Loyola Press, Teaching Children to Pray the Rosary. TheCatholicKid.com, How to Pray the Rosary for Kids. And uh, Catholic Icing, I think it's called, .com, Start Kids on the Rosary. So, Kirsten, the internet is filled with possible helps and guides for you as a parent and for all our parents who want to teach their children the rosary. I would mention, though, that in with some families that I know, and this is what they, they try to do, they first they center them and say, we're going to be in God's presence, and we're going to speak directly to God now. And that can, I think, jolt even the youngest of hearts and minds. And then, because the rosary is a meditation, you do a little picture for them. You know, picture the mystery, and you can say to them, picture this is the mystery that we're praying because remember the Hail Marys fundamentally are simply mantra prayer they're things which lead us into this picture meditation about the mystery itself so that would be one suggestion I would make I find I'm a very visual person and I, I found as a child learning prayer it was very helpful for me to visualize and of course we know Saint Ignatius tells people to pray that way all the time. Place yourself into the gospel scene and find yourself there. So just a few suggestions, Kirsten, and blessings. And I pray, God, that by the end of October, the frustration will be less and the prayer increased. <laughs> Thank Ho you. And hopefully they keep praying for you. Please, God, I depend on it. All right. As thanks. I tell people all the time when they say, Bishop, we're praying for you, I always say it's the only reason I'm standing up. <laughs> so, And it's true. I believe it. All right. Thanks, Kirsten. We're going to go to Teresa in Perrysburg. Uh, Dear Bishop Thomas, my sister who left the church said Pope Francis has announced the one world order religion, Chrislam. I am finding it on the my Internet. Word. I'm her, sorry. Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. <laughs> she says, I am finding it on the Internet. I told her it was fake news, but can you tell me what this is all about? Thank you. My goodness. So, Teresa, thank you for writing in. And the first thing I would say, I'm so sorry that your sister left the church. So that's my, it's a heartache for me even to hear. I'm sure it's a heartache for you. It's also a heartache for me, Teresa, as I know it is for you and other persons who are listening and watching, that people find something on the, on the internet and they take it as fact. So not only, you're absolutely right, Teresa, it's fake news, it's absurd for anyone to say that Pope Francis has announced the one world order religion, Chrislam. Teresa, for all our listeners and viewers, false, absolutely incorrect, and not true. So I think we have to say that. Now, by the same token, we have to say that clearly the, bishop, the Pope, as the Bishop of Rome and the Pope of the Church, he made a visit to Kazakhstan. And in Kazakhstan, he met with people from all different religions, which Benedict had done, which John Paul had done, for example, in Assisi. So this is nothing new. That's number one. Number two, to say that the Pope has suggested Chrislam is utterly ridiculous. 
And let me direct you, Teresa, and your sister who gave you false information toward a Vatican, it's right on the Vatican website, the document Apostolic Journey of His Holiness to Kazakhstan. It was the 13th to the 15th of September, 2022, opening the plenary session of this seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religions, and it's his address. And it's right on the internet. Obviously, your sister didn't find this, because this is not fake news. This is real news. And toward the end of the document, listen to the quote that it says here. This is the Pope's own words from his statement. May we never aim at artificial and conciliatory forms of syncretism, for they are useless, but instead firmly maintain our own identities, open to the courage of otherness and to fraternal encounter. So notice the word syncretism, uh, uh, as my mother used to say, a 50-cent word, which simply means all religions are the same and there's no distinction. Wrong. The Pope is even saying here that we have to avoid artificial and conciliatory forms of syncretism. Therefore, Teresa, the Pope never said that Chris Lam is the one religion. In fact, he said just the opposite. So share this document with your sister so that she might know what is true and what is not true. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Bishop. We don't have time for another question. Oh, my but goodness, we've got Ron. a minute, minute and a half. Um, sure. Just speak to, we. this happens quite a bit on the show. People that listen all the time know where somebody writes in and, and quotes somebody that got information that off the Internet or something that's bad. Yes. And... Can you just talk about that a little bit? I mean, it, it seems to be happening more and more and more, and it isn't happening just in religion. It happens in everything. Sure. Well, and one of the things they read, and obviously this bishop or that bishop or this person or that person says, well, this is what the Pope said. And, you know, how often do people hear me say, and I'm tired of saying it, and I, but I say it all the time, go to the sources. So what was the source? Yeah. That's why I directed Teresa, go right to the document. Go to the address the Pope gave. He says the exact opposite of what he's being accused of. So there is no Chris Lom. There is no indication that that was even recommended. And there, that word doesn't even appear. So where do people get this? That means go to what the person said and stand firm in the truth, which is represented by fact and objective reality. Yeah. All right. Well, if Thank we you. could get a prayer and a blessing. Surely, Ron. So since we took the gospel, as we do always, we'll take the prayer from the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ron, I'm, I'm afraid we, I talked about my pilgrimage too much. We didn't get to enough questions. Well, that's, you know, sometimes that happens. But I sure hope, folks, that you will follow <laughs> us through the pilgrimage, through Spain, through Italy, and obviously praying for and with you during that whole time. Blessed be God. Thanks for being with us, folks. We'll see you again right here next week at the Bishop's Corner.